Hello and welcome back to our uh, video series on pharmacology. In this video, we, can, we will continue our course on uh, chapter number 9, Musculoskeletal Drugs. Uh, learning objectives for this chapter. Compare and contrast the therapeutic effects of different categories of drugs used to treat osteoarthritis. Compare and contrast the therapeutic effects of different categories of drugs that are used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. List several factors that contribute to the development of osteoporosis. Describe the therapeutic effects of the different categories of drugs used to treat osteoporosis. Uh, describe the therapeutic effects of skeletal muscle relaxant drugs and of drugs used to treat fibromyalgia. When given the name of a well-known musculoskeletal drug, identify its trade name. When given the generic and trade names of a musculoskeletal drug, identify what drug category it belongs to and what disease it is used to treat. When given a musculoskeletal drug category, identify several generic and trade name drugs in that category. And lastly, when given an ending common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. Okay, a quick introduction. Musculoskeletal drugs are used to treat diseases of the muscles and of the bones. Some examples that would fall under this category, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, bursitis, tendonitis, rheumatoid arthritis, muscle spasms, fibromyalgia, and gout. So this is a, a very short list of the possible diseases that you could encounter with the musculoskeletal systems. All right, first we'll start off talking about drugs that are used to treat osteoarthritis. Now this is also known as degenerative joint disease, and it occurs when there's a cumulative damage that causes degeneration of the cartilage pad induced by normal wear and tear on the joints. So what you have is erosion of the bone ends uh, inside of a joint. The first joints to exhibit signs of osteoarthritis are the weight-bearing joints, such as the hips and the knees, and also joints that are used constantly, like your fingers and your toes. Because they get used more often, or they bear weight all the time, they will develop more wear and tear faster than other joints might. Some common symptoms of osteoarthritis are pain, inflammation, and swelling. Now, the synovial membrane of the joint may also be involved. Also in this condition, the damaged Bone ends often form bony spurs that irritate the adjacent tissues next to them. A common drug that's used to treat osteoarthritis is acetaminophen, more commonly known by its, its brand name Tylenol. Now this is an analgesic drug, so this is used to treat pain, but it lacks the ability to inhibit the production of prostaglandins. And also, uh, acetaminophen has no anti-inflammatory action, so it's mainly used to treat the pain. Now the American College of Rheumatology recommends the use of acetaminophen especially when it's a treatment of mild to moderate pain. This is the drug of choice for treating musculoskeletal pain for older patients. Acetaminophen will have fewer side effects than the NSAIDs would, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. And it's still you know, the drug of choice, even though it cannot treat the inflammation that's caused by the condition. Another type of drug that's used to treat osteoarthritis are the salicylates. An example of this type of drug class would be the ASAs, or acetyl salicylic acid, more commonly referenced as just aspirin. And th these have analgesic and anti-inflammatory effects that's used to treat both the pain and the inflammation. And this is used for uh, minor conditions of the bones and of the muscles, such as uh, bursitis or tendonitis or muscle sprains. Common examples of salicylic uh, drugs would include aspirin, such as Bayer or Ecotrin, magnesium salicylate, sold under the trade name Dones, and when it comes to long-term therapy, it's common for uh, this class of drug to be irritating to the stomach. And it has been shown to cause gastric ulcers. One of the examples we mentioned on the last slide, uh, Ecotrin. This is manufactured as an enteric-coated tablet, so it will not dissolve in the stomach, which is true for all enteric-coated tablets. They're meant to dissolve once they reach the uh, small intestine. It dissolves only when it comes to contact with the higher pH environment of the duodenum, which is the very first part of the small intestine. Another type of drug that could be used to treat osteoarthritis are the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now these inhibit the, the production of, of prostaglandins. So these provide an analgesic and an anti-inflammatory effect. And these have, a, have less of a tendency compared to aspirin to cause a gastric irritation or a gastric ulcer. And they are structurally very similar to aspirin. So there is, a, there is an allergy concern. If you are allergic to aspirin, you will most likely be allergic to these also. Common examples of uh, NSAIDs that are used for osteoarthritis, uh, diclofenac, which is sold under the trade names 
Cataflam or uh, Voltaren, Phenoprofen, known by its trade name uh, Nalfon, Ibuprofen, known by its you know, very popular trade names Advil and Motrin, Indomethacin, known by its trade name uh, Indocin, and also uh, Catoprofen. Some other examples of some NSAIDs, Meloxicam, known by its trade name Mobic, Naproxen, known by its very popular trade names Aleve and Naproxen, Oxaprozen, known its whole under the trade name Dapro, Paroxicam, known by its trade name Feldine, and Selendac, which is sold under the trade name Clinaril. All right, now we'll mention a drug alert. Now, the NSAID Diclofenac is available as a topical gel to treat the pain of osteoarthritis. So this was the first prescription topical skin gel that was approved for treating a pain of osteoarthritis. See, another uh, drug alert in reference to the drug uh, Indocin. Besides its use in treating osteoporosis, Indocin has an unusual use also. It is given intravenously to newborn infants to close a persistent patent ductus arteriosus. Now this structure is something that's found only in the developing fetus when it's in utero and is something that should normally clear up once the baby is born. But when it doesn't happen, you know, these have to be corrected, either through uh, medications or through surgeries or perhaps both. See, another kind of drug that could be used to treat osteoarthritis are the COX-2 inhibitor drugs. Now, these kinds of drugs belong to a larger category of the NSAIDs, and they act because they sl selectively inhibit cyclooxygenase 2, or COX-2 for short. And COX-2 is an enzyme that leads to the increased production of prostaglandins, and these prostaglandins will eventually lead to pain and inflammation. So if you inhibit the action of this enzyme, you will lessen the inflammation and lessen the amount of pain. A good example of this kind of drug would be Celecoxib, which is known by its trade name Celebrex. See, that leads us to another uh, drug alert. Uh, COX-2 inhibitor drugs were hailed as a new effective way to treat osteoarthritis when they first came onto the market in 1999. In the past, uh, the COX-2 category of drugs also included Vioxx and Bextra. But these drugs were taken off the market in 2004 and 2005 because they greatly increased the risk of heart attacks and strokes. So Celebrex is the only COX-2 inhibitor drug that remains on the market, uh, though a study showed that patients who use this drug have an increased risk for heart problems. And this drug is also used to treat colon polyps and uh, dysmenorrhea. So it has other uses, not just osteoarthritis. Another type of drug that's used to treat osteoarthritis corticosteroid drugs. Now these act by having an anti-inflammatory effect. And these kinds of drugs are given orally to treat acute episodes of osteoarthritis that is associated with inflammation of the synovial membranes. Because of uh, side effects that are associated with a prolonged use of this kind of drug, it's only prescribed to treat acute symptoms for a limited amount of time. Right, when it comes to the uh, administration of this kind of drug, it would be injected directly into the joint that is affected by osteoarthritis. This is also known as an intraarticular administration. It could also be injected into the soft tissue near the joint to relieve bursitis or tendonitis. Okay, some examples of corticosteroid drugs for osteoarthritis. Bethamethasone, better known by its trade name Celestone. Dexamethasone. Hydrocortisone, also known by the names Cortef or Solucortef. Methylprednisolone, also known by the names Medrol or Depomedrol. Prednisone, known by the names Deltazone or metacortin, and also the drug triamcinolone, known by the names Kenalog or Aristopan intraarticular. In this image, we have an example of a packaging of a prednisone. In this kind of drug, it's important to follow the directions carefully because the, there's a tapering off of the amount of pills that you take. So as you can see, for day one, there are you know, six pills. Day two, there are five. Day three, four, and so on. So the directions must be followed exactly as prescribed in order to be uh, fully effective. So another type of drug that's used to treat osteoarthritis is hyaluronic acid. This is secreted by the synovial membrane of a joint, and this helps to maintain the lubricating quality of the synovial fluid. Now the drugs used in this situation are derivatives of hyaluronic acid, and these would be injected directly into the joint that is affected, and these work by improving uh, the viscosity and the lubricating quality of the synovial fluid. And some brand names that you would see this listed under Hyalgin or Synvisc. Another type of drug that's used to treat osteoarthritis, Flavocoxid, better known by its trade name Limbrol. This is a prescription drug. It's actually a medical food product. It contains uh, concentrated plant antioxidants and also zinc. 
and the way that this drug would work is it inhibits the enzyme lipoxygenase, also known as LOX. Another drug is used to treat osteoarthritis, osteobiflex. This is an oral dietary supplement, which is really a combination of glucosamine and chondroitin. Glucosamine is used in the body to produce cartilage, and chondroitin is, helps the cartilage to retain its water content. I right, now talk a little bit more in depth about prostaglandins. Uh, prostaglandins are present throughout the body and exert various effects, but were so named because they were originally isolated from semen, prostate gland, in men. Now these play a role in causing uh, the pain and inflammation of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. And what happens is when body tissue is damaged, cells are destroyed and the cell contents spill into the interstitial fluid. Okay, after that, the enzyme cyclooxygenase, or COX for short, converts these cellular contents into prostaglandin, and the prostaglandins then stimulate pain in the receptors in that area. So the greater amount of tissue damage, the more prostaglandins are produced, and the greater the sensation of pain. And the joints that have a large number of pain receptors and damage to the joints can cause chronic and severe pain. So by inhibiting the, the COX enzyme, fewer prostaglandins are produced, and then fewer pain receptors are activated. All right, now we'll talk about uh, some topical drugs that are used to treat osteoarthritis. And these are over-the-counter drugs that are used to treat the pain associated with the condition. An example of this would be uh, capsaicin. This is a natural substance that is derived from chili peppers, and it makes the skin and the joint less sensitive to pain, and does so by diminishing the sensory nerve signals. And this can also be used to treat uh, minor muscle injury pain. And some examples of this would be aspercream, also known as uh, trolamine salicylate, capsaicin, known by capsin or icy hot, and bengay, known as uh, methyl salicylate and menthol. See some other examples? Musterol deep strength rub, and therapeutic mineral ice. It is very common to see combination drugs that are used to treat osteoarthritis. And some examples of this kind of drug would be arthritis pain formula, which is a combination of aspirin, aluminum, and magnesium. Arthrotec, which is a combination of diclofenac and misoprostol. Ascriptin, which is a combination of aspirin, aluminum, calcium, and magnesium. Bufferin extra strength, which is a combination of aspirin and calcium and magnesium. And Fomovo, which is a combination of naproxen and isomeprazole. All right, now we'll move into drugs that are used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, or RA. Now, RA produces symptoms such as pain, inflammation, uh, swelling, joint deformity, in particular in the hands, and loss of joint function. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition. So the body's own antibodies target and destroy the cartilage and the connective tissue and the joints. And it's thought to be triggered by a virus. So drugs that are used to treat rheumatoid arthritis would include salicylate drugs, NSAIDs, COX-2 inhibitors, and corticosteroids. And is treated with many of the same drugs used to treat osteoarthritis. And drugs that are used as the first line of treatment include uh, salicylate drugs, uh, the NSAIDs, and the COX-2 inhibitors. Now, acetaminophen is not used because it is not effective against inflammation. See, another type of drug that could be used to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis are gold compound drugs. Now, these may be added if the salicylate, and the NSAIDs, or COX-2 inhibitors fail to control the symptoms. And these compound drugs actually contain gold, anywhere from 29% to 50% of the total drug. It can be given through uh, capsules or in a solution meant for injection. And this type of compound drug is used to treat active rheumatoid arthritis. These drugs work by inhibiting macrophages from the immune system that attack the joints. But unfortunately, this kind of drug cannot reverse the joint damage that's already occurred. Some examples of this kind of drug, oranifin, better known by its trade name Radara, and gold sodium thiamylate, which is sold under the trade name Aralate. It's another type of drug that can be used to treat RA are monoclonal antibody drugs. And these will bind with a tumor necrosis factor to prevent inflammation. Some examples of this type of drug, adolimumab, better known as the trade name Humira, sertolizumab, better known by the trade name Simzia, golimumab, better known by its trade name Simpony. Some other examples of monoclonal antibody drugs, infliximab, also known by the, the trade name Rumicade, rituximab, better known as rituxin, tocilizumab, better known by its trade name Actemera. Right, another type of drug that's used to treat rheumatoid arthritis are Janus kinase inhibitors. 
Now these are also known as JAK, J-A-K. Janice kinase are enzymes that help trigger cytokine, and these are released by uh, white blood cells during an autoimmune response. So they produce inflammation. So by inhibiting Janus kinases, you will limit the, the amount of inflammation. See, an example of this kind of drug would include tofacentinib, and sold under the, under the trade name Zaljans. Another type of drug that could be used to treat RA, immunosuppressants. And like name implies, they suppress the immune system. And this is used for patients with active and uncontrolled rheumatoid arthritis. Some examples of this kind of drug would be azathioprine, known by the trade names Azosan or Imurin, and Cyclosporin, also known as Gengraf or Neural Sandimmune. Now, some immunosuppressant drugs and other drugs used to treat RA have a very particular method of action. There are some that inhibit T lymphocytes that attack the joint tissues. An example of this, this kind of drug would be Abatacept, which is sold under the trade name Orencia. There are some drugs that will block interleukin-1 from binding with receptors on cartilage cells and destroying them. So an example of this kind of drug would be Anakinra, which is sold under the name Akinaret. And some of these drugs will block a tumor necrosis factor and suppresses the immune response. An example of this kind of drug would be Etanercept, which is known by the trade name Enbrel. And there's some where the action is really unknown. An example of this would be hydroxychloroquine, and that's sold under the trade name Plaquenil. Some of these drugs are immunomodulators for an, an overactive immune response. An example of this drug would be leflunamide, which is sold under the trade name Areva. And some are chemotherapy drugs uh, for cells that are dividing uncontrollably. An example of that would include uh, methotrexate, which would be sold under the trade name of Rumatrex Dosepak. The other drugs in this category are aminosalicylic acid drugs with an anti-inflammatory effect. An example of this would include sulfasalazine, which is better known as Azulfidine. All right, that brings us to a drug alert. The drug lefonamide, or Areva, has a very long half-life, and traces of the drug can still be found within the body six months after the last dose. So because of that, this drug is not recommended for patients who have a decreased liver function and who cannot metabolize the drug normally. This will prolong the half-life even longer, and which can result in toxic levels of the drug. All right, now move into drugs that are used to treat osteoporosis. Now, mature bone is very hard, but it is a dynamic living tissue. And each year, approximately 10% of the skeleton is rebuilt. And there are two main types of cells that are found within the skeleton. You have osteoblasts, which build new bone, and osteoclasts, which break down and remove areas of, of old and damaged bone. So the skeleton is a, a living, dynamic tissue. It is constantly being built up and then broken down. So normal bone will maintain a very healthy balance or homeostasis between the amount of bone that's being deposited and the amount of bone that's being broken down. This is a continual process every single day. Now when this balance gets thrown off is where we have problems. Now this normal bone balance is maintained by various hormones. They will control the amount of calcium. And those hormones include a parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid gland and calcitonin, which is secreted from the thyroid gland. And some other factors to help maintain a normal bone balance are various hormones that are found within women, your diet, and also exercise. Whenever you are exercising, not only are you building bigger and stronger muscles, you're building stronger bones at the same time. So osteoporosis is the thinning of the bone at the cellular level. And there are some risk factors that are included, uh, being Caucasian or an Asian race, having a slender build, uh, smoking, alcohol use, a lack of exercise. These are all common risk factors. The most probably well-known uh, risk factor is being a postmenopausal woman. This is because the decreasing levels of progesterone no longer stimulate the new bone formation. And also decreasing levels of estradiol allows osteoclasts to increase the breakdown of bone. So you are losing bone much faster than you are uh, depositing new bone. This can be prevented or treated with uh, drugs that de decrease the rate of bone reabsorption, supplemental estradiol and progesterone, uh, supplemental calcium and vitamin D, and increasing levels of exercise. All right, a focus on healthcare. Osteoporosis is a major public health problem. An estimated 44 million Americans have osteoporosis or are at risk for developing it. One in every two women and one in every four men over the age of 50 will have a fracture due to osteoporosis at some point in their life. And healthcare costs for osteoporosis related fractures went from $7 billion in 1995 to $14 billion in 2012. 
And one category of drug that is used to treat osteoporosis, bone resorption inhibitor drugs. And these work by inhibiting osteoclasts that decrease the rate at which bone is reabsorbed or broken down. Some examples of this kind of drug would include alendronate, better known as Fosamax, abandronate, also known as Boniva, resedronate, also known as Actinel, and zoledronic acid, which is known as Reclast or Zometa. Although all bone reabsorption inhibitor drugs are used to treat osteoporosis, their frequency of doses and their routes of administration are very different. Alendronate and resedronate tablets are taken orally every morning, 30 minutes before eating. The drug abandronate is advertised as the osteoporosis drug that is the easiest to remember to take. It can be taken daily, 2.5 milligram tablets, but its selling point is that it can also be taken just once a month with a tablet that is 150 milligrams. Zoledronic acid is now approved to treat osteoporosis in postmenopausal women with a single dose given just once a year, but that dose can only be given intravenously, so that would necessitate a, a visit to a doctor's office or to a clinic. There's some other types of drugs that are used to treat osteoporosis. Uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators. This is used to prevent and to treat osteoporosis. It's worked by binding to estradiol receptors on the cells. And they will stimulate the re those receptors in the same way that estradiol does. An example of this kind of drug would be reloxifene, which is sold as a trade name, Evista. In the past, a selective estrogen receptor modulator drug, or CIRM as they're called, tamoxifen, was being used to treat breast cancer. Now, it was discovered that in patients who took this drug for breast cancer, there was a very positive effect on the bone. So researchers then created another CIRM drug that did not have the severe side effects of tamoxifen and was suitable for treating patients with osteoporosis. And that drug was Avista. So another type of drug used to treat osteoporosis are estrogen drugs. An example of this would be estradiol. This is a female hormone that is secreted by the ovaries, and it works by inhibiting the action of osteoclast that will break down bone. Now, when levels of this naturally occurring hormone decline after menopause, the rate of bone reabsorption accelerates. So, a way to help treat this and prevent this is by using hormone replacement therapy. So, these are used to treat the symptoms of menopause. And some drugs that fall under this category of hormone replacements are also indicated for the for the prevention of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Some examples of estrogen drugs used for osteoporosis: conjugated estrogens such as primarin, estradiol, better known as estrace or estraderm or vivel, and estropapate, also known as origin or orthoest. In the past, hormone replacement therapy was commonly used used for extended periods of time to treat the symptoms of menopause: hot flashes, vaginal dryness, in postmenopausal women with a secondary effect of preventing osteoporosis. But now, however, it is known that this can increase the risk of endometrial cancer, breast cancer, stroke, and myocardial infarction. So this has limited the use of these drugs for the long-term treatment of osteoporosis in women who are postmenopausal. Some other examples of drugs that could be used to treat osteoporosis, a calcitonin salmon that's sold under the trade name myocalcin. This is a form of the hormone calcitonin, and it acts by taking excess calcium in the blood and depositing it to the bones. Denosumab, also known by the trade name Prolia, this is a monoclonal antibody drug that inhibits osteoclasts from breaking down bone. Teriparatide, also known by the trade name Fortio, this is a recombinant form of parathyroid hormone that is naturally made in the body. This is used to stimulate a new bone formation in patients who are at a high risk for fractures. There's some other drugs that could be used for osteoporosis. Calcium supplements, these are over-the-counter, medications, calcium with added vitamin D, uh, milk with added calcium, and soy and rice milk also have added calcium. And acid Tums, this falls under the category of a calcium supplement, and this uses calcium to neutralize uh, stomach acid, and it also advertises it has a secondary therapeutic effect of being a calcium supplement for women. Uh, some other examples of calcium supplements, uh, Caltrate, Chews, Oscal, Tums Calcium, for life bone health. It's common that you'll see uh, combination drugs used for osteoporosis, and these come in a, a number of different combinations. Some are a combination of a hormone drug containing an estrogen and a progestin or an androgen. Some examples of that would include Activila, which is a combination of estradiol and norethindrone, Climapro, which is a combination of estradiol and levonorgestrel, Femhert, 
which is a combination of ethanol estradiol and norethindrone. Premphase, which is a combination of uh, conjugated estrogens and then medroxyprogesterone. Prempro, which is a combination of conjugated estrogens and medroxyprogesterone. See another combination type that you could see are drugs that contain a bone resorption inhibitor and calcium or vitamin D. Uh, some examples of this would include actinel with calcium, which is a combination of calcium and resendronate. Uh, Fosamax plus D is a combination of vitamin D plus alendronate. All right, next we'll talk about uh, skeletal muscle relaxant drugs. Now, some drugs that fall under this category are used only for acute muscular conditions, such as strains or sprains or pulled muscles. So these would be treated with analgesic drugs and NSAIDs. It could also be used with rest and physical therapy. And drugs used for these acute conditions are specifically relieving muscle spasms and stiffness. All right, some examples of this type of drug, carisoprodol, also known as the trade name Soma, chlorzoxazone, also known as Paraflex or, or Parafon Forte DSC, Cyclobenzaprine, also known as Flexoril, Diazepam, also known as Valium, Metaxalone, also known as Scalaxin, Methocarbamol, also known by its trade name Robaxin, and Orphenadrin, also known by the trade name Norflex. Now there are certain kinds of drugs that are used to treat severe muscle spasticity in patients with MS or cerebral palsy or stroke or spinal cord injuries. And examples of this kind of drug would include baclofen, known by the trade name Lyarsal, dantrolene, known as dantrium, diazepam, also known as valium, and xanadine, also known as xanaflex. All right, now we'll move on to drugs that are used to treat fibromyalgia. Now, the cause of fibromyalgia is unknown currently, and is diagnosed by very specific uh, small trigger points throughout the body, including the neck and the back and the hips, are very, very tender to the touch. There are may, many ways you can uh, treat fibromyalgia. One is using a topical anesthetic spray, such as AeroFreeze or ethyl chloride. You can have a local anesthetic that's injected into uh, the trigger points. These would include uh, lidocaine and procaine, also known as xylocaine and novocaine, respectively. You can take an oral muscle relaxant, such as cyclobenzaprine, known as uh, flexoril, uh, oral antidepressant drugs, amitriptyline, Duloxetine, known as Cymbalta, and also Milnasopran, also known as Cevela. You can also take an oral anticonvulsant drug, such as uh, Pregabalin, which is also known as the trade name Lyrica. Okay, that brings us to the end of this chapter on musculoskeletal drugs. We will continue our video series on pharmacology with our next video on chapter number 10, Respiratory Drugs.